Hey everyone, Rachel here again from Living Lands and Waters. Just wanted to say thank you so much for tuning in to the Facebook Live education session that we had on our page today. And I'm so sorry that the audio started cutting out about 15 minutes into the video. And so you guys can still see I'm still outside. I'm still ready to give you some education today. So just stay tuned for more. We're going to be posting this video as I'm just recording it on my computer right now versus going live. But I know you guys love the live portion of these videos, so feel free to still uh, comment below and ask some questions so we as an organization can get them answered. And if you have any other questions um, specifically for the education side of things, feel free to reach out to me via email. My email is rachel at livinglandsandwaters.org and you can find that on our website underneath my picture. And so let's get into it. Let's complete this education session and talk more about the organization, how it started 22 years ago and how we progressed in the last years, what type of things we're finding in the rivers that we work on each and every day, how that garbage is impacting the natural environment, and challenging you to do some thinking at home to reduce your waste, whether that's for your school, for your home living, with your friends, for the sports you're at, at church or clubs. We have all different things that we are a part of in our everyday lives. So let's reflect on that a little bit and get right into it. So I'm the education coordinator and I work for Living Lands and Waters and this organization started 22 years ago with a gentleman named Chad Pergracki. And so as a young man, he grew up in the Quad City area, specifically East Moline, where the mighty Mississippi River was right in his backyard. He was a mussel shell diver, and he was seeing a lot of garbage in the mighty Mississippi River, and he said he was wanting to do something about it. He was sick of seeing all this garbage. He had a lot of garbage to clean up, but he was willing to make this change in his community. And so uh, he realized that he needed some money to be able to do this each and every day because there was so much garbage, right? And so he started reaching out to local uh, uh, businesses to get a sponsorship to ask them for money so he could be able to support himself doing this. And with a lot of people saying no, Chad didn't give up. He didn't take that no and he kept working towards cleaning up this garbage in the Mississippi River. And so slowly but surely, people started to catch on to this one guy's mission of to clean up the Mississippi River. And so with more people paying attention to what this young man was doing, more and more people started to support him. So from one man, one mission to clean up the river with one boat, Chad is now still uh, very much in this organization today, 22 years later, and we are still cleaning up the Mississippi River along with so many other rivers in the country as well. And so in 22 years, there's been a lot of hard work, a lot of no's, but a lot of yeses too. In those 22 years, the organization has worked in 21 different states on 24 different rivers with the help of over 117,000 volunteers cleaning up 10.7 million pounds of garbage. And so a lot of you are wondering, how in the world do we clean up all this garbage that is in our rivers? And so in this picture, you will see what our fully operational barge fleet looks like. So this uh, barge right here, as you can see, it has a roof on top that is where we live for six to nine months and we also have the floating classroom so that is where i teach uh, local students wherever we may be on the river i invite them out to come onto our barge to get a uh, full exposure of what we are doing each and every day so we have five barges in our operation we have that house barge which i showed you we have a metal scrap barge the excavator barge our garbage barge this is our tire barge so it's pretty crazy to be a part of this operation and it's pretty remarkable to see all that garbage on the river. So you might be wondering what kind of garbage are we finding out on these rivers and how in the world does it get there in the first place? So in 22 years, we have collected 1,480 milk crates, 10,426 55 gallon barrels, 95 message in a bottle, 67 shopping carts, 
450 televisions, 120 bowling balls, one ping pong table, four pianos, 922 coolers, 29,478 feet of barge line, uh, and 90,000, like I said before, 90,555 tires. And in addition to that, we have bagged up 133,909 bags of garbage. So finding like plastic bottles or little pieces of styrofoam, we bag those up and put them in a garbage bag, tie them off, and we load them onto our barge that way. So we are finding a lot of different things out on the river, but like I said, how is it getting there? How in the world is a bowling ball getting there? Or how is a mattress pad getting there? Or a refrigerator, a hot tub? It's a really good question to further discuss uh, as students or even adults that may not be too familiar with river and flooding or just littering. So those are definitely some ways. So just to get a little bit more into it, the climate is changing each and every day in our world today. And unfortunately, that means that more floodings are happening for our rivers. When floodings happen, when they go past the floodplain, when that water rises up, the water pushes out and it sometimes goes into farm fields, it goes into businesses, it goes into people's backyards and into the houses too. And so a lot of times, whatever is getting in the way of the water, it will automatically, because water is so powerful, it will take everything back with it, with it back to the river. And so that is one way that those items can end up into our rivers. Another way is people just being careless about dumping things into the river or littering. So unfortunately it happens a lot more than we maybe recognize because maybe we don't live by a river and we think there's no way this is going to be hurting uh, the river and the water quality. But in fact, a lot of people are dumping maybe big things like tires or an old refrigerator or something because they don't want to get rid of it or maybe don't know how but there's also a lot of small things that are in our rivers as well that are just as harmful and just as crazy so for example a cigarette right somebody is flicking their cigarette butt out the window I bet right now or dropping it on their uh, walk while they're walking their dog in a by a park or something and even though that cigarette butt seems so small, it actually is a huge problem that is in our world today. Um, we have one cigarette butt and it pollutes up to two gallons of water. So think of a gallon of milk. Two of those jugs are is what is being polluted by one tiny cigarette butt. And so I have one here for you today that I picked up at a park right by the river. And so this one cigarette butt, you can see that it's super tiny, right? And this is the cigarette butt right here. And it is made up of mostly plastic, if not 100% plastic fibers. And so this can get blown away and it can end up in our river. So somebody that's walking by the river and the wind picks it up, or like I said, a flooding happens and it washes it away. This can get into our rivers very easily. And even though you're not right by the Mississippi, you might be near a water source that feeds into the Mississippi. And so when something travels a long distance, um, it might go from one river to the next river, to the next, to the Mississippi, and then eventually it goes into our ocean, which a lot of people are starting to hear and talk more about now, more than ever. And so um, this one cigarette butt has 3,000 chemicals in it. And so when I think of 3,000 chemicals in my body, that doesn't sit well with me, right? So we are harming the natural environment. We're uh, polluting our water, which we get our drinking water from. We are polluting fish that we might eat uh, or birds that uh, might be eating those fish because they're eating a small piece of plastic like this, right? So. Uh, when we think about things, if we're not worried about how the natural environment is impacting animals, it's impacting us, right? So either way, we should be concerned about this pollution problem and how it is changing us. Uh, probably not for the best. So if we think about the food chain, even though animals might not be eating that plastic directly, think about a small bug that gets eaten by a fish that gets eaten by a bird, right? And so even that bird that is not eating plastic directly. They're eating that plastic that came from the fish, but that also came from the bug that they're eating. 
So from a study, out of 30 fish that were found in Lake Michigan, 26 of those fish had 100 pieces of microplastics in them. And so you might be wondering, what are microplastics? Microplastics are pieces of plastic that get broken down smaller and smaller and smaller as time goes on. So think of maybe a Tupperware container where it has a plastic lid, right? So sometimes uh, maybe the wind or it gets banged up against the rock that's in the river, gets pushed up against the tree, that breaks up into smaller pieces, right? And then from there it gets broken down into smaller and smaller and smaller pieces. And so I actually have an example for you right here. So this jar has a bunch of plastics in it that we can still see with our eye but eventually they will get broken down into even smaller pieces where you and I wouldn't be able to see them without a very, very good microscope. And so you can see that this water isn't the cleanest when a fish or maybe a turtle or even a, a dolphin is trying to get food from their riverway or their ocean, they aren't able to see what is all in that thing that they are trying to eat, right? So a lot of times fish or the turtles, they're starting to mistake in their food, but in fact, it's actually plastic. And so they're eating a lot of these pieces of plastic. This is all sedimentation in here. So it makes it really hard for these animals to see what they're actually eating. And so those small pieces of plastic break down into smaller pieces and it's impacting them. Uh, there's animals that are dying. There's animals that are being found with a bunch of plastic in their stomach and it's not good, right? And so I have a few pictures to share with you here. Uh, this turtle probably thinks that this is a jellyfish, but in fact, it's actually a plastic bag. So I know that there's been a lot of talks about reducing or actually eliminating plastic bags and this is a reason why. This picture right here. So what do you see that this bird is trying to eat? And what is beneath this bird as well on the land? I see plastic bags, maybe food wrappers, uh, hard pieces of plastic. There's an estimation that one million seabirds die each year from this type of garbage debris because Remember, they think that this is their food. This picture right here shows that this turtle uh, had 138 pieces of plastic in its stomach. And even, like I said, when we think about the tiniest of organisms, such as a bug, those are eating plastics too. And so this picture is of something called zooplankton, and it's a very tiny uh, bug that's usually on the surface of our aquatic environments and it gets eaten by fish or maybe some jellyfish. And so this is a microscopic picture of a zooplankton. And you'll see that there's a bunch of green dots on the picture as well. These green dots represent small, small, small pieces of plastic. And so this was in the North Pacific Gyre in 1999. And uh, Captain Charles Moore found six times more plastic particles than zooplankton in that area. So it's crazy to see uh, different types of things that are being impacted by the products of plastic in our world today. When we think about our everyday life and what are the items that we are using in our everyday life, I'm sure plastic probably comes to mind for a lot of items that you are using. This computer that I'm using has plastic on it. The hard hat that we need to wear on our barge, this is made of plastic, right? Our shampoo bottles, our toothbrushes, the forks and straws that we get from restaurants, and even so much more than that. And so this is an opportunity for you to be at home with your friends, your family, and really think about ways that you can change the use of your everyday things and make a difference in your life, to make a difference for our natural environment. So I'm gonna share with you a few things that I do in my everyday life to avoid using plastic um, and reduce my consumerism and avoid using the things that I know are impactful in a negative way towards our natural environment. And so this first example is a simple glass bowl. And yes, it does have a plastic lid, but it is reusable, so that's really good. Um, but I use this and I keep it in my car or I bring it with me uh, on my backpack. 
uh, if I have my backpack with me and I use it for when I go out to eat. A lot of times I need a box for leftovers and what are those boxes typically made out of? styrofoam right and now restaurants are starting tra to transition to maybe cardboard boxes which is better than styrofoam but it's still waste right and so a way to reduce your waste and avoid that styrofoam or cardboard box is to bring your own bowl and so i've used this probably over a hundred times and it's still in really good condition right versus that styrofoam that box that i would be using i would use it for the one meal to save in the fridge for one day and then throw it out where it then goes into the landfill so thinking about things for restaurant as well connected to restaurants like i had just said a lot of uh, places uh provide plastic cutlery right so i have here my little to-go pack and i bring this everywhere with me it's always in my purse or my backpack and so this is a little set that i won and it has a butter knife, a fork, and a spoon made out of bamboo. And so I'm able to get this out at the restaurant if they only offer plastic. I'm able to put it back into my little to-go container and then I'm able to go home and wash it. So this would typically run for about 10 or $12. And I know for some people that money is an issue and that's okay. There are other ways to make sure that you can reduce your waste. So, um, maybe for a lot of us we have extra cutlery in our kitchen just at our everyday that we use so this is an example of exactly that a butter knife a spoon and a fork and i just found a dish towel at my house and i'm going to fold that up and i'm just going to roll my silverware into this dish towel or handkerchief and use that as my to-go cutlery set so it looks about the same. And I think this is even better because you can get a reusable napkin out of this little set as well instead of using paper towel or napkins, which I think is really cool. Um, like I said, toothbrushes, those are most of the time made out of plastic, if not all the time. And so I was in a fair trade shop and I saw this bamboo uh, toothbrush. And so I purchased a few of them and this is what I have been using um, for the past six months or so. And so you can see that this is made out of bamboo, it's wood, that's a lot more sustainable product than plastic is, right? So this is a better option. So um, you can look into a local fair trade shop yourself. Try to avoid ordering these things from online because most of the times your package is gonna include plastic anyways. If you are ordering for maybe more of a local spot, be sure to request for no plastic in your uh, shipping materials. Um, what else do I have? I have a reusable bag. So I know it doesn't look like a bag, but it's really cool because it's so small. But I take this everywhere with me, whether I'm running just a few errands, going to my local farmer's market, um, just carrying things uh, here and there. And this is so nice because it's so small and I can reuse it a ton of times. I know a lot of people are doing the reusable bags for the grocery store, but don't forget to take those bags when you go to Target, let's say, or Walgreens. You can use those everywhere, not just the grocery store. So that's a really cool thing to do. Um, and I have this product here, which I'm sure we are all familiar with. Um, by the show of hands, who has used a plastic straw at some point in their life? I have, I'm definitely guilty of that as well. Um, but I now have invested in a reusable metal straw. So it comes in this little container here and it's this small, but then it contracts out to be a much better straw for my everyday use. So instead of accepting those plastic straws, I'm able to refuse those and use my reusable metal straw, take it home and wash it, clean it out, put it right back in its container every time I'm done using it to make sure it is ready to go for the next time I need to use it. So plastic straws, that's a huge thing. Um, they are at every to-go restaurant. A lot of times you are getting plastic straws when you didn't even ask for them when you're sitting down for dinner. Instead of accepting them, start refusing them. You don't always typically need a straw. There are people out there that do need straws, so we need to keep that in mind. Um, but if you are not needing a straw or you just like straws 
invest in a reusable metal straw and this should be able to last you for the rest of your life as long as you don't lose it instead of the thousands of plastic straws that we are using. We were working in Memphis for about a week and in just one week, we collected over 700 plastic straws. And I would like to show you those right now. So here are all the plastic straws. Now, every day in the US, 500 million plastic straws are used. Just in the US, every single day. And that contributes to our overall waste and consumerism as well. So if you keep accepting those plastic straws, restaurants are going to keep giving those to you. But only 9% of plastics are actually able to be recycled. So straws aren't being recycled. They're single-use plastic. You use them once and then you throw them away. So these actually go to the landfill right away versus being recycled. Um, and you can make a little difference. Doesn't seem like much by just refusing plastic straws in your everyday life, but I promise you, you are making a difference and you're making a change. So let's get into it. Let's get into our challenges for the day. I'm ready to give you challenges to make a difference in your everyday life and you can start that today. And so I'm gonna give some options to those that can go outside and for those who no longer can. So the first one is our challenge for C10 Clean 10. And so I just did this yesterday. And so all you need to do is find 10 pieces of garbage that might be near your house or if you're able to go on a walk. If you see 10 pieces of garbage, you should clean them up. So I needed a pair of gloves because I don't want to touch dirty garbage, right? You need a garbage bag and then you just need somebody to record you picking it up. Once you pick it up, you post it on Instagram or Facebook. Of course, taking Living Lands and Waters and using, using the hashtag of C10 Clean 10. And you talk, uh, or excuse me, you post about your garbage. And so this is what I found in just like 10 minutes yesterday near the ditch down here. Um, on this property. That's our first challenge. So if you see garbage, pick it up. And that isn't just for uh, this time, but it's in a year or it's in five years. So make sure you're cleaning up garbage when you see it. Our next option for the outside people that are able to go outside are sit spots. So this is a technique that a lot of people should be more aware of and I think it's really beneficial. Uh, being outdoors is a beautiful thing so why not utilize it to make your observations in our natural environment. So if you find a spot, uh, somewhere can be in a field, up against a tree, maybe on a playground swing. If you're able to sit there in silence with no communication and just observe, what's ha observe what is happening around you. So you might see that the grass is starting to get greener. You might see that trees are starting to bud and flowers are starting to bloom. It's a beautiful thing to be able to observe right what's in front of us. And after you sit there for five, 10, 15 minutes, you can get up and go journal about it, draw a picture, create a poem. You do this sit spot every day for a week in the same spot at the same time for again, about five to 10 minutes. It's really up to you. So transitioning to those for going inside, staying inside, um, we have a few things for you. So I want you to pack yourself a typical lunch. You're not going to school on every day, unfortunately, but you are still eating lunch every day, of course, right? So what does your typical lunch look like? If you pack a sandwich, what do you pack it in? If you have a bag of chips, what is that bag of chips material made from? If you have a juice box, is there a straw in that juice box? Thinking about ways that you can change your school lunch is definitely a way that you can change the world for the better. And then our last challenge is grab five. So I had talked about this a little bit earlier before, but I want you to grab five different items that you use in your everyday life. Shampoo bottle, conditioner bottle, a toothbrush, maybe it's your favorite cup that you use for water each and every day. Um, does it have a straw in it? Uh, is it made from plastic? Talk about what those items that you use in your everyday life are made from and what you can do to start making a change. So start researching those same products but that are packaged in a more sustainable way and make those changes in your household. And then once you complete those five, you can grab another five items and start working towards that. So just make sure you are doing whatever is best for you. I want to make sure that uh, was said because 
what my story is isn't the same as the next person or yours or the next door neighbor. So just think about how everybody comes from different backgrounds, different cultures, um, and things like that. And we're all experiencing this COVID-19 right now. So I just wanted to shout out to you all to really take this time to look and reflect into your community and make sure you guys are lifting each other up during this difficult and unknown time. And we will get through this and we will be making this world a better place. Thank you so much for joining in on the education session and I can't wait to see you next time. Thanks guys.